If you've been to our YouTube channel before, you may have already seen that we've done an overview of the Microsoft Lists application. In this video, we're going to go a bit more in depth with different options in a list and what you can use them for. Templates are great to show you different examples, but if you start from scratch, there's a few complex options which can make it overwhelming. When you start a blank list, the first column you'll see is the title. The title relates to whatever you place in the following columns. If you've watched our previous videos and webinars, you may have heard of Stu's Lawns. Stu's Lawns help people maintain and manage their lawn care. So let's use the example that Stu wants to use List to track his client's lawn care. The title column could be used as the client name, and this way the following columns would track the client's lawn care. So the first column that Stu will want to add to his list is to take the contact details of a potential client. So if we hit the add column button, we could add a location. So we could say client address. If you want to add a description, you absolutely can. This is just to go into more detail about the list column. So the type you'll always leave is the type shown here because you want to use location. You can then select the different options. So do you want the street address, the city, the country or region, postcode, and the name of the property. Under more options, you can also require that you complete the information here, which can be helpful because you don't want to add a new client without having their details. So we're gonna switch this to yes. And then we'll hit save. So you can see that this has created all the column titles for the address. The next column Stu might want to add is to get an email address or contact telephone number. And the best one for this would be a single line of text. So we could just put telephone number. And there's no need for a default value here. And under more options, you can add a maximum number of characters. So if it was a UK telephone number, you could put 11 just to make sure that you've got the correct amount of, uh, of numbers in the telephone and then you can require that column information again it's really handy to have a telephone number for a potential client so you want to make sure that your team are adding that in you can also enforce unique values so unique values means that you don't duplicate information in the list so obviously you wouldn't want to add the same telephone number for two different people because it's likely that one of those will be incorrect and we're going to hit save so telephone number has now been added. Once you've added a few columns, if you go into the new item, you'll see that they've been added. And you can see here, it says you can't leave these blank because these are required values. So you put Jack's, you put the client's name here, you put their address, you put their telephone number. But we're gonna back out of here for now so we can continue adding more columns. And ideally, you want to add all the columns before you start inputting information. So next, you might want to assign a member of his staff to the client's lawn care. So you can use add column and then add person. So employee assigned. And then again, you can add a description if you want person or group you need to leave that as is and then there's a lot of more options here so again require unique values um, allowing multiple selections etc and what's great about employee assigned column is actually if we go back into new item where it is uh, you can assign people from your team's application. So if I was gonna assign Sam to look after this lawn, you can physically tag her in this list item and she'll be notified of that. So now Stu has all the information, he's going to want to look at a date for the initial inspection. So the next column we can add is a date and time. Once in, we'll put the title of date of inspection. You can opt to include a time if you want to. Obviously, if we're looking at pre-booking an appointment, then you will want to. But if you're just looking for a general date, just slide that across to no. 
the default value under here. So if you select none, then when you're entering the information, you select the date and time. But the other options, you can automatically have it as today's date, which probably isn't useful when you're pre-booking appointments. Or you can select a date and time, which means that if you were to select one every time you entered this new item, it would default to that date and time that you've pre-selected here. So for this one, we're going to leave that as none. Under more options, this might be a good time to use the unique values because if you are booking dates and times, then this will stop you from double booking and it will flag up if you're trying to book the same date and time. So let's jump forward and let's say the inspection has taken place. So Stu could add a column here for multiple lines of text and that just means it's a bit bulkier than having a single line or a restricted amount of text. So he can use this to write notes from the inspection. So notes from inspection. On the more options here, you can uh, use an enhanced rich text, which basically means you could include tables, pictures, hyperlinks, which could be good if you've taken pictures of the lawn for the inspection. So you can slide to add, see if we hit save there. Another way to add images there is when you go into a new item, the option to add attachments to any of your items. Or there is also a great column called image. So this could be images from inspection. And that just basically allows you to include an image. Some other columns that can be used following the inspection. So you could use a rating. That would be under choice. And so you could say condition of lawn. And then your choice one could be a great. Choice two could be okay, and choice three could be bad. And then you can display it as a drop down menu, as selection buttons, however you kind of want. Um, you can allow multiple selections, which obviously you don't want if you're doing a rating scale. And then we'll hit save. Another option for this one could be yes or no. So yes or no is literally the choice of yes or no. So you could say, does the lawn need complete digging? So let's just say the entire lawn needs to be redone. Yes or no. And hit save. So we're just going to pop into new item again just to show you that some of those. So does the lawn need complete digging? No, it doesn't. What's the condition of the lawn? Great, okay. All that kind of stuff. So now the inspection has taken place and Stu needs to give a quote for Jack's lawn to be done. But first, Stu needs to order in some special equipment. So you could have a hyperlink column here. So special equipment for ordering. And that basically means you could just link directly to any online sites to order in special equipment. And then we're gonna go for the quote. So the next column you could add would be currency. So quote for work. And then you can change the currency format. So if you want to go global with lawn care, you have a, a whole range of different currency options here, which is fantastic. But we're going to move it to the UK because that's where we're based. And you can also allow minimum and maximum values here, although that's not applicable when you're doing a quote likely. Then after this, you could add some other columns. So you can include a yes or no column if they've taken up the service. At this point, Stu could create another list, naming this one the prospects and the second one clients. But you would need to input details again, such as the name, the contact details, the quote. So this is something to bear in mind. But now Jack is a client of Stu's lawns. He can add more columns like the date of the first treatment, has it been invoiced, yes or no, progress images, columns, um, single lines of text or multiple lines of text just to keep updated. And this will really help him to track the progress. So now we can add a new item and we can fill in all the details. So as we said, the title is going to be the client name. 
We want the client address. We're going to enter a telephone number. We're going to assign Sam to the work. And we're going to have that date as inspection. 1.30 p.m. And she's been to the work, so we can OK, lawn needs three treatments. So that's what the notes looks like. So you can see in comparison, a single line of text is just a box there. And then multiple lines of text is a full page where you can add images and other things like that. We can add an image of the inspection. The lawn condition was OK. Does it need digging? No, it doesn't. We don't need any special equipment. Let's say we're going to charge £450 for the work. And we're going to hit save. So you can see all the details have been filled in there. So as we mentioned earlier, there are two sides to this list. So the first is up to inspection and then there's post inspection. So the easiest way to add those extra notes is to edit in grid view. And what that will do is it will just bring up all the columns and it will just allow you to edit them all. You can also add a new item here um, and then just remember to exit the grid view. Another great thing about this is that you can select certain ones. So say if Sam was working on a few of her clients just updating them after a day of inspections, she could tick them all here and then edit in grid view and that would only show her the ones that she selected. So hopefully this kind of gives you an overview of how lists can easily keep you on top of projects. As we've seen in the templates, there are so many options such as event itineraries, employee onboarding, recruitment tracking, content scheduling. And our best advice would be to just think of the processes that you need a more efficient way to track and start exploring lists from there. As there are a lot of options and it all sits in teams, so all of your staff can access the lists if they're all in the same team and they can all collaborate on this one project together.